Urinary tract infections or UTIs are common in dogs. So it's important to understand that the cause of your dog's bladder problem might not be what it seems. Many bladder issues are purely inflammation and there's no bacteria associated with them at all. This is why giving antibiotics really won't do anything to help and is an exercise in frustration. To a holistic vet, UTI usually stands for inflammation, not infection. This is important in how we might treat bladder issues, but first, let's talk about the signs of bladder woes. UTI symptoms The typical symptoms of bladder infection or inflammation include Frequent urging to urinate Urine may or may not contain blood Sometimes you may just seen a little blood at the very end Other times there might be blood clots or sometimes it's hardly noticeable If you can have your dog pee on a white paper towel, that's a good way to see if there's blood present or not you may see your dog licking, sometimes intensely before your dog urinates. Or you may find that she licks when she comes back inside the house. Often inappropriate urination, house soiling. General restlessness. Often waking you up a couple of times in the middle of the night needing to go to the bathroom. Once your dog goes, she immediately feels like she needs to try again. You may even see her try a few times and appear to squat or strain a few different ways. How to know if your dog has a UTI It's a good idea to have your holistic vet run a urinalysis on your dog to know more. Dr. Chapman reminds us that other health issues like bladder stones, diabetes, certain other metabolic diseases can make your dog more susceptible to bladder infections. Your holistic vet will help to rule out another health issue in your dog first, as it may be the reason why she's having bladder troubles. That's why your analysis is so important. A closer look at your dog's bladder health testing takes the guesswork and worry out of your natural care plan. A fresh urine sample is best for testing so try to book your dog in for a morning appointment. This allows you to catch her first pee of the day beforehand. A first morning urine sample lets your vet know how well her kidneys are working overnight. So let's look at the components of the urinalysis and see what they can show us, in addition to her physical exam, signs of illness, and other lab tests. And it's important to note that no one component seals a diagnosis or treatment. The combined results contribute to the full picture. One collection method the vet clinic will record how you collect your dog's urine sample, as it can change some of the results. When you collect a sample at home in a clean container it collects material from all parts of the urinary tract. In your female dog, this includes the urethra and vulva, if you have a male dog it includes his urethra and prostate. It might sound silly but some dogs get a bit of stage fright when you try to catch a sample at home. The good thing is that if this happens to you, your vet can grab a sample for you at her appointment. Your vet can collect a sterile sample called a cystocentesis. She'll use a needle to poke through your dog's body wall right to her bladder. This may lead to a few red blood cells on her test, but your vet will note that. Another way to collect urine is with a urinary catheter, although this is usually for male dogs. This also collects urine straight from the bladder. To color and clarity the next step is to record what your dog's urine looks like. This includes the color and how clear it is. More concentrated urine is more yellow, and debris in the urine makes it cloudy or discolored. 3. Specific gravity Specific gravity is a test that measures the concentration of your dog's urine. This is the test that helps your vet know more about kidney function too, and why that first morning sample is so important. 4. pH The pH level of your dog's urine is important to know. It gives an idea of acid-base balance. If your dog is on a high-protein diet she'll likely a lower, more acidic pH. If she has an infection or urinary stones she'll have a higher, more alkaline urine pH. 5. Protein A small amount of protein in your dog's urine can be normal. If this test shows a large amount, it could indicate problems in her kidneys, bladder, or lower in the urinary tract. If she does have a high amount of protein your vet may run some extra blood tests. 6. Glucose You may be familiar with testing blood sugar levels but glucose can also show up in urine. 
When there's sugar in the urine, the most common cause is diabetes, but false positive tests are possible. It's also possible for kidney disease to cause glucose in the urine. This is why your vet will recommend blood tests if glucose shows on her urine test. 7. Ketones The liver makes ketones by breaking down fat. Your dog shouldn't have ketones in her urine. They can appear on a urine test if your dog has been fasting or as a complication of diabetes. 8. Bilirubin A small amount of bilirubin in urine may be normal, especially in male dogs. Bilirubin can also appear if there is liver disease or bleeding problems. So again, when this comes up on a test your dog will likely need some blood work. 9. RBC Red blood cells I mentioned earlier that red blood cells can appear if the vet used a needle to collect your dog's sample. A small amount of RBC can be normal with low-grade inflammation. A larger amount of blood could be mean. Severe inflammation infections cancer kidney disease a bleeding disorder if your vet finds blood shield discuss the possible reasons for it based on the other tests. 10 WBC white blood cells white blood cells indicate the degree of inflammation. Inflammation can occur because of infection calculi crystals or stones tumors wbc's can also originate from inflammation of the vulva prostate or prepuce your vet should evaluate a cystocytensis needle sample to find out the source if wbc's continue to show up in your dog's urine without bacteria your vet will collect a cystocentesis sample the lab will culture the sample to see if there are bacterial organisms 11 bacteria sometimes bacteria is due to contamination after the sample is collected this is common if your female dog has an inflammation or infection on her vulva but it doesn't mean that her bladder is also infected if there is bacteria on clean sample or a cystocentesis sample then you know it's real it's important to know that not all urinary tract infections shed bacteria in the urine that's why your vet may recommend a culture test 12 cells in addition to red and white blood cells. A urine test will screen for other cells. Most cells from seen from the bladder and urinary tract will be normal, but your vet should assess them for signs of cancerous changes in the cells. 13 casts casts are a group of cells that can stick together in a cast-like shape. There are casts that can be normal but some can also be present if your dog has kidney disease. 14 crystals the urine can get oversaturated with substances that form crystals different crystals form because of different disease conditions the ph of the urine urine concentration crystals can make it more likely for your dog to develop bladder or kidney stones but they don't necessarily indicate the presence or type of stone i hope this helps you better understand why testing is helpful even when choosing natural therapies they can guide you on the best first steps so let's jump into our top home remedies now. Home remedies for UTIs in dogs okay so now that you know what's irritating your girl, let's review what you can do at home to help her. Here are some homeopathic remedies that Dr. Sarah Chapman and Dr. D. Blanco recommend. Pick the one that best fits your dog's symptoms. APIs Melifica This is Dr. Blanco's favorite starting remedy for bladder symptoms that happen fast. It's good for burning that comes on violently. Frequent desire to urinate but can only pass a few drops at a time. Incontinence sensitive to touch in the mid-back, over the kidney area. Worse with heat or being covered. Better with cool air and moving around. Aconite Aconite is a great remedy for a dog who's been frightened or shocked or overexcited for some reason. It's also helpful after a weather change, perhaps if your dog got especially cold. Aconite can help with common bladder symptoms like straining, burning, you can tell if your dog gets anxious on beginning to urinate, unproductive or painful urination, brown or brick red urine, Nux Vomica Nux Vomica is a good remedy for many dogs with bladder complaints. It's great for these symptoms. Spasms, cramping or straining to urinate. History of exposure to toxins like flea and tick medications. Cold natured and not cuddly or wanting to be touched or even trying to hide away. Constipation or any GI issues. 
With these symptoms, consider intoxication as the cause and Nux Vomica as the go to remedy for your dog. Mercurius remember, that this a homeopathic remedy, so it isn't toxic like mercury. And it helps a lot with acute UTIs when symptoms come on fast, especially when Nux Vomica doesn't work. There are several Mercurius remedies. Mercurius Vivus and Mercurius Solubilis are two that are about the same thing, so just choose one or the other and you'll do fine. Mercurius is helpful when your dog has blood in her urine, feels the need to urinate frequently, especially at night. This is the hallmark. Seems to be restlessness, especially at night. Is panicked to get our for a pee or seems distressed. If she has very strong smelling urine, she seems to be thirsty for cold water. If she has any extreme straining, either for diarrhea or urine. This is a very important sign for mercurious patients. These are the major remedies for acute cases. If your dog has recurring or chronic symptoms, you need expert help. So I recommend you consult a homeopath for alternative remedies. Your homeopath will take your dog's whole symptom picture into account, not just the UTI issues. Some herbal options can also provide relief. I'll get into those soon. First, let's chat about how to give your dog these homeopathic remedies. How to give homeopathic remedies for UTIs in dogs Dr. Chapman recommends the following plan for giving these remedies for UTI support. Step 1 Homeopathic remedies will usually come in pellet form. You'll want to look for a 30C potency in the above remedies. Step 2 To prepare your remedy, take about 3 pellets add them to 1 half cup purified water in a glass. Stir it for about 30 seconds. This will leave you with many doses. Step 3 For dosing, you're giving a dribble off of a spoon or about 1 cc or ml from a dropper or syringe. All you need to do is wet the mucous membranes of your dog's mouth. Dosing Remedies If your dog is suffering a really intense attack, repeat the chosen remedy every 15 minutes for a total of 3 doses. For less acute or intense states, repeat 3 times, half an hour apart. Or give a dose 3 times, each an hour apart, if it's not quite so intense. Basically, you just want to stack up a few doses to give your dog a push. After you've dosed three times, stop dosing and watch for an hour or so. If the symptoms subside, don't re-dose. Naps are a good response, especially if followed by a lot of urine later on with no issues. Store the remaining mixture at room temperature on the counter, covered with a napkin. Watch to see how she responds, if the symptom returns, stir it up and give her another dribble. Tip, in homeopathy, every size dog gets the same dose. It doesn't matter if you have a Great Dane or a Doxy. What matters is the potency, in this case, 30C, and how often you give the remedy. Let's talk about herbs too. Herbal remedies There are a few herbs you can try at home to help soothe your dog's UTIs. Couch grass This is a common weed in North America and is sometimes referred to as quack grass. According to Herbs for Pets by Gregory L. Tilford and Mary L. Wolf, it's also a go-to for urinary tract problems. Couch grass is an anti-inflammatory, mild antimicrobial and pain soother. It's also a diuretic, which means it can help encourage waste elimination. Dosing couch grass for your dog's UTI. Give couch grass as a cool decoction you can make yourself. Simmer a heaping teaspoon of the chopped dried root in 8 ounces of water for 20 minutes. Cool and strain the liquid. Use a dropper or teaspoon to place in your dog's mouth, 1 half teaspoon per 20 pounds of body weight twice daily. You can also add it to your dog's drinking water. Just make sure to find an organic or pesticide-free herb. Parsley leaf Parsley leaf is another diuretic that can be helped with UTIs. This is because of its antiseptic properties, plus it's easy to give your dog. Dosing parsley leaf for your dog's UTI. Tilford and Wolf recommend juicing parsley leaf in a vegetable juicer. Feed the juice at 1 teaspoon per 20 pounds of your dog's body weight. It's best to give it directly by mouth and on an empty stomach. You can add it to her drinking water if she won't let you give it directly. 
Cranberry and methionin Nancy Scanlon DVMC VA likes to use cranberry and the amino acid methionin for treating UTIs. She finds that the combination of the two works as an effective antibiotic. Dosing methionin for your dog's UTI. 100 mg twice daily for small and medium dogs 200 mg twice daily for larger dogs Dr. Scanlon also recommends testing your pet's urine with litmus paper strips. This helps make sure it's slightly acidic 6 to 6 .5. If it's above this range, increase the methionine to 3 times daily. Dosing Cranberry Extract for your dog's UTI. 100 mg can be given to small dogs 200 mg for medium dogs 300 mg for large dogs 400 mg for giant breeds at 400 mg Dr. Scalin recommends giving these doses three times daily. But what about antibiotics for dog UTIs? At the top of this post I mentioned that antibiotics can be an exercise in frustration. The truth is, they shouldn't be part of your holistic vet's plan at all. If your vet does recommend antibiotics as a first step you're going to need to ask her why. A holistic vet who recommends antibiotics isn't really holistic.